work through the second practical for mind ventilation at the University of Queensland in the Newcrest HVAC laboratory titled Psychrometry using this device here. My name is Sarah Coglin and hopefully this short movie will help you complete the prac and the report afterwards. The psychrometry practical focuses on the quality of air travelling through a mine or a duct as we have here. During this prac we'll measure a number of temperature and pressures throughout the system to observe how the quality of air changes uh, where we expose it to different scenarios. The quality of air in a mine is vital to the health of all workers underground. The temperatures and pressures experienced by personnel underground affect the work that they are able to conduct and therefore the optimum conditions must be maintained to ensure maximum productivity. This is completed by the use of air conditioning in many mines. Air refrigeration and heating in some parts of the world play a vital role in the ventilation of a mine. Depending on the surface temperature and the sources of heat in a mine, the air that is pumped or exhausted through the mine may require heating or cooling before it is sent underground or reaches the working base. It is therefore important to understand what happens to air as it is heated, cooled, humidified and dehumidified. The theory behind the practical surrounds the operation of an air conditioning unit and the purpose of an air conditioning unit is to control the atmosphere so that the desired temperature, humidity, pressure and airflow are maintained within the environment. These are controlled through a number of psychrometric properties. To determine all psychrometric properties, the wet bulb, dry bulb and pressure of the environment must be known. Using these three psychrometric parameters, all other properties can be determined through the use of a psychrometric chart, which looks like this. Properties can also be found from tables and formulas or computer modelling programs where more exact results are required. During the course of this practical, we will compare the data recorded from this setup to the data recorded by the computer program which is connected to this duct. The air conditioning unit which will be used to complete the practical looks like this and is a Hilton Air Conditioning Laboratory Unit A660. It consists of this cubic duct with a number of temperature and pressure sensors throughout, which you can see an example of here. One for wet bulb temperature and one for dry bulb temperature. The sensors measure the temperature of the air as it flows through the duct, driven by this axial fan. You can see that the wet bulb temperature is measured by this sensor that is surrounded by a wet sock, so as to record the temperature of the moisture in the air. There are a number of pressure gauges beneath the duct located near this boiler for adding moisture in the form of steam to the air in the duct and this refrigeration system to cool the air and dry out the moisture. The pressure drop across the orifice plate can be read using this incline manometer. This control panel determines which aspects of the air conditioning unit are operating and changing the quality of the air. Each have labels which correspond to the instructions will work through the process of modifying the elements the air is exposed to shortly. This figure shows the setup of the duct and the location of the various sensors in the system. Each set of temperature sensors contains one wet bulb and one dry bulb sensor, as shown here, and the temperature is measured before and after all possible changes to the air quality through addition and removal of moisture. Point 3 here is a steam injector just inside the duct, which, op which is operated by the boiler. Point four here is a preheater. Point five is the evaporator, which is connected to the refrigeration system. And point six is the reheaters. The data from the eight wet bulb and dry bulb sensors, as well as the temperature at the evaporator outlet and condenser inlet and outlet can be displayed using this 15 way selector switch. The first 10 from this dial, like this, and the numbers appear here and the last three from these toggle switches. The evaporator pressure, condenser inlet pressure and condenser outlet pressure can be read from these three pressure gauges here. Noting that the units is in bars. The first step of the practical is to find the current pressure by googling UQ weather as we did in the first prac. This pressure is recorded in Table 2 found in the appendix of the handout. You can then begin the setup for the air conditioning unit and the computer program. For the air conditioning unit, you must check that the wet bulb reservoir is filled to below this level as indicated here. 
and then you're able to turn on the water supply for the boiler, which is from a tap behind the computer here, and the power supply for the air conditioning unit, which is this big switch here. You must ensure that water is visible in the sight glass of the steam generator before turning on any of the steam generators from the control panel. The main switch here for the fan can now be turned on and the water solenoid valve will be heard to open and the fan will operate. You set the power supply to the fan like this. And for this practical, the fan power should be 150 volts. You must now set up the computer program for collecting data in the duct. Open HDL as shown and select the language as English. The data file name needs to be selected as test 1, as shown, and the sample interval needs to be 10 seconds. You can now collect data and select the multi-graph display option. You want to view the data from sensors T1 to T8, then press the record data button and wait 30 seconds to allow the program to begin recording data. Once all the data has been recorded, you must end the recording and exit HDL. You must then open the file in Excel. To find the file, you must change the file type to All Files, and then you open the DAT file. You will then be given a series of prompts. To open the file correctly, you must select Deliminated, Semicolon, and then General from the options. The Excel file you now have can be saved and sent to all PRAC participants. There are four stages to this practical, the first of which involves heating air, and we do this by turning on the one kilowatt preheater, like this. Observe what is happening in the graphs through HDL, and eventually the temperatures in all sensors will stabilise. This may take a number of minutes. At this point, you can manually record the temperatures from the 15-way selector switch here throughout the duct, and record the pressure readings across the orifice plate from the manometer here. The second stage of the prac involves humidifying the air in the duct and this is completed by leaving the preheater on and then switching on the 1 and 2 kilowatt steam injections like this. You can again observe the changes in the temperature sensors through the HDL and once the temperatures stabilise again after a few minutes, you can record the temperatures through the 15-way switch and the pressure difference across the orifice plate and commence stage 3. Stage 3 involves dehumidifying the air in the duct after it has been humidified. So with the preheaters and the steam injectors turned on still, turn on the cooling compressor as well. Analyse the graphs again and observe the qualities of air that are being changed. After a few minutes, there should be some condensation of water vapour from the air in the duct and that will start to drip from this hose down here and be recorded in the container. Once dripping commences, a stopwatch must be started to record the time that is taken to fill 50 millilitres of the container. While the water is condensing from the air, you can read the temperature from the 15-way switch and the pressure from the manometer. You must also record the pressures that are being displayed by the gauges in the bottom of the air conditioning unit. In stage 4, the 1 kilowatt of reheating must also be turned on. Once the reheater is turned on, the stopwatch must start again and the time taken for a further 100 mils of water to enter the container should be recorded. Once the temperatures have stabilised in the HDL, the manual readings of the temperatures and pressures throughout the system can be recorded as before. You have now finished recording data in HDL. You need to switch off the preheaters, the steam injectors, the cooling and the reheaters and set the fan to maximum speed to dry out the duct completely before turning the fan power and water supply off. The final step while in the laboratory is to save the data from HDL so that you have it for when you write the report. The report will be due 10 working days after your prac, which excludes public holidays, weekends and the mid-semester break at 5pm. The report needs to follow this structure and must include a copy of your raw data in the appendix. 
If you have any further questions after watching this movie or reading the handout, please ask the tutor, either in your prac or by appointment. If you're looking for the original version of this movie, you can find it on the course Blackboard, Blackboard page or on YouTube by searching the key subtitled terms.